1,300 slabs. I just purchased the largest graded comic collection that I've actually ever even seen, and certainly the largest graded collection that I've ever bought. A close second, uh, the biggest collection before this was a thousand slab collection, but this is 1,300 slabs. And the seller just left, he drove from Arizona, rented a van, drove from Arizona, um, we did the deal. It was a fantastic meeting. I really love to get to spend time with uh, collectors and people that you know watch the channel and stuff. It was really great to meet a new friend. He decided he didn't want to be in the video uh, for personal reasons, uh, which I totally understand. Some people are all about it. Others would just rather remain anonymous. So now this is the part where you feel a little bit of anxiety as a dealer, where you put out a lot of money for something and you look at the scope of the work. So in this video, we're going to talk about the details of this collection. We'll talk about pricing. We'll talk about how much I paid, how much it's worth, and we'll do a lot of unboxing and looking at some of these amazing covers. The way that this collection went down is the seller had all of this cataloged in Go Collect, and he had it in Go Collect in different lists. So one of the lists was called Graded Comics and it had 914 comics in it. And those 914 graded comics are in these brown boxes with numbers on it. Those are the ones, there's 30 boxes that make up 914 slabs. Then there was another list in his Go Collect that was called No Fair Value. And those were books that Go Collect, for whatever reason, didn't have a fair market value associated with it. We also made a deal on those books, and those are the ones over here in these My Comic Shop mailers, which unfortunately I actually really don't like these mailers that My Comic Shop uses. As you can see, the book can move around in there when it ships, and that can cause the book inside the case to shift, and it doesn't protect the book. So these things suck. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to get rid of all of them because I, I don't wanna use them. They damage books and shipping sometimes. But all of these are 370 no fair value lists. So just to give you an idea, we might go over all of the lists on the computer later so you can see what's in there. I just wanted to show the magnitude of it before we start cracking open boxes and organizing stuff. But before we get too far into it, make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter over at BriceComics.com. That's where you get first access to these new slabs when they get listed. I'll, whenever I list new slabs, I'll send out an email notification. You can use code COLLECT10 to get 10% off. That code is always active. And if you subscribe to the newsletter at BriceComics.com, you're entered to win a free slab this month. We're giving away a three slab connecting set by Carrie Andrews, which is really awesome. And we also do a monthly giveaway here on the YouTube channel. If you subscribe, comment, and like, you're entered to win a free slab each and every month. So this collector, I'll tell you a little bit about the collector. He shared with me that he's been collecting for decades and he started out as a big collector, got a lot of his own personal stuff graded, and then he fell away from collecting for a long period of time, got back into it, then he fell away again, then he got back into it, and then this happened where things just got a little bit out of hand and he said that he felt a little bit overwhelmed with the collection, decided it was time to regroup and refocus and you know that's something that I see a lot in this business and there's not necessarily anything wrong with you know going through this kind of phase with collecting I think this happens to a lot of people it's happened to me before where you you really need to like think about where you're headed with your collection what's your strategy what's your goal and a lot of the time like this collector has been putting this collection together for decades you have a lot of enjoyment throughout all of those years you know so um, catch and release is another way I like to think about it you know you 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 buy these books you enjoy these books you sell these books like it's it's all part of the process um, but that's a little bit more of the story for this one is that it was just time to not have so much and to refocus he's not done collecting but he's definitely gonna switch gears because sometimes you'll find stuff like this I just saw this over here uh, sea devils number Number one, you have it in a 7.5, a 7.0, and a 4.0, which is just a great book. I actually really like that book. Scalp number one, I wish that was a 9.8, I've never seen that in a 9.8. Uh, Saga 19, Saga number one, there's a third print. Um, Saba, Saban's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number three, and then there's three copies of Power Rangers number one. I'm so stoked to see that. I think this is just... An awesome book, 1994, first comic book appearance of uh, the Power Rangers. We've got a bunch of Ronin Frank Miller from the 80s, really awesome series right there. 
So this is going to be a lot of fun to go through this collection because when I made this deal, I spent a lot of time with the collection on Go Collect, coming up with a value and coming up with uh, how much I can pay, how much I think I can sell it for with all the labor and all the unknowns and everything involved with moving 1300 slabs. But it was two weeks ago. I, I get emails all the time about comic books. I've been looking at comic books every day. So I remember maybe like 10 big books that were in here uh, or bigger books, nothing more than about three or four thousand um, dollars. And the rest of it, it's like unboxing for the first time, like finding these uh, this showcase. I don't remember the showcase at all. I mean, I remember looking at the, the dollar figures, but I don't remember that. So it's really exciting for me. I'm really excited right now to crack these open and see what I just bought. <laughs> Friday, August 18th at 5 p.m. Pacific time, over on my whatnot, link down in the description for $15 towards your first purchase. $1 starts on everything you see here, including New Mutants 98, 9.6, White Pages, First Appearance of Deadpool, Old Label, and then we have Wolverine Limited Series number one, two, three, and four, all 9.8 white pages. Number one, nine, eight, white. Number two, nine, eight, white. Number three, nine, eight, white. Number four, nine, eight, white, all starting at a dollar. How about Wolverine number one in a nine, eight, white? First, Wolverine as Patch. Some X-Men 109, some Invasion. Annual. How about Todd McFarlane signed Incredible Hulk 340 in a 9.6 white pages with the custom label. What a book. Keep the signature series going. Uncanny X-Men 266. New stand edition. Says it on the label. Custom label. 92 signed by Chris Claremont. Um, some more Wolverine. How about some Spidey books? Amazing Spider-Man number 300, 9.0 white pages. And we also have some other awesome Spideys. Hope to see you over on my Whatnot Friday, August 18th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Bookmark the additional shows as well because we've got slab shows for days. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this off camera. We're gonna open up all these boxes take out all the highlights, show you guys some highlights, and then we'll probably have to have uh, follow-up videos, a little video series, even just for the highlights of this collection because it's just too much to get through in one video. We just finished processing the collection. It took us a couple days to get everything unboxed and organized, and you know that feeling you get when you are shopping for a comic book, and then you buy it, and then you wait for it to be shipped and for it to arrive, and then you unpack it and you look at it, and you get that initial dopamine hit where you're like, oh wow, there it is, and it's even even cooler than, than you remember it being, or the opposite of that, you go through all of that waiting and anticipation and open the box and you're disappointed for one reason or another. I just went through that times 1300 and it's a little bit overwhelming. It's uh, some extreme highs and some extreme lows, some things that you know I'm really excited about and things that I think I made a big mistake on. So this right here, is all of the slabs that are going to probably go straight to whatnot, all right? So there's a lot of books here, a lot of really cool stuff as well, um, like Vengeance Number One, First America Chavez. This was really cool, and Adam Hughes, Vam Vengeance of Vampirella Number Seven. Look at that cover by Adam Hughes. Um, anyways, there's some, some cool stuff in here, some cool Venom books, some really cool uh, Venom covers, and you got stuff. Over here, we've got uh, Avengers 195, first appearance of Taskmaster and Cameo, 96 white, Army of Darkness, number one, 92 white. So there's some awesome stuff in here, and most of this will probably go directly to whatnot. Then over here, this is the no fair value slabs, which we're gonna save for another video, uh, which I think I made a huge mistake with this lot of books. And then over here is the highlight books, okay? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight boxes of highlight books. And for the rest of this video, we're gonna go over three boxes of the highlight books that I have set up here. And then we're gonna go over the valuing and pricing of this collection. So let's flip the camera around and take a look at some of these highlights. X Factor number 24 in a 98 white origin first appearance of Archangel. This is always an impressive book to me because anytime I see this in a raw book collection, it is always hammered. So I'm always very impressed to see it in a 98. And we have two copies in a 98 white. So this collector, as we go through this, I think he just picked stuff up when he saw them at a good deal, even if he already owned copies of it. X Factor number six, first full appearance of Apocalypse in a 98 white. X Factor number five. Uh, first cameo appearance of Apocalypse in a 9-8 white. 
X-Men number four in the 98 white, Conan the Barbarian number one, origin and first appearance of Conan, X-Men annual number 14, uh, either the first full or the first cameo of Gambit, depending on which camp you're in, newsstand edition, which is really cool to see this book in a 9.8 with a newsstand, Wonder Woman 184 in a 98 white. This is one of my favorite Adam Hughes covers. In fact, I may end up keeping this because someday I'd like to have a Wonder Woman Grail and I like to have like uh, displays for my Grails and so it would be cool to have a modern book to go with the uh, vintage Wonder Woman Grail. This is from 2002 and it's got the Golden Age Wonder Woman, the Golden Age Wonder Woman with the modern age and I just love what he did there with um, Wonder Woman. I just really dig it. X-Men number 109 we have an 80 white. First appearance of Weapon Alpha we have a 94 white and we have a 96 off white to white so it's cool to see Multiples of that. Preacher number one in a 9.8. First full appearance of Jesse Carter, Tulip, Cassidy, and Saint of Killers. First time I think I've ever even had this come through the shop in a 9.8. Saga number one, 9.8 white pages. First appearance of Marco, Alana, Hazel, and so many others. First print, 9.8. Awesome book. Civil War Frontline. This one I put in here because I wanted to show that this is individually numbered by CGC. It says number 158 of 175 graded for the Wizard World VIP program. So CGC has been individually numbering graded copies of books for decades. I was not the first to do that. Uh, I was just jumping on a trend. Annihilation Conquest number six in the 9.8 white pages. So here's another example of where he bought multiple copies of a book, probably whenever he saw it for a good deal. This is Gen 13 Limited Series number one from 1994. I believe this is the first uh, cover art by J. Scott Campbell. Um, it's the first title entirely devoted to Gen 13. Uh, I always get that confused though because there's several different Gen 13 number ones from the same era, but uh, I think this is an undervalued book because of the early J. Scott Campbell work. We have one, two, three, four, and five copies of Gen 13 limited series number one. Harbinger number zero. Uh, so this was included with the Harbinger Children of the Eighth Day trade paperback. Uh, there's several different versions with different color schemes of this for Harbinger. Game Boy number four. Really cool to see some Game Boy um, magazines, I guess you would call them, uh, from 1990. G.I. Joe Real American Hero number one, nine two white pages. Now, none of these books were pressed and cleaned that are in the old gen labels here. Um, like this one, G.I. Joe Real American Hero number one in a nine six white. This book looks really, really nice. And so I'm gonna have to take a real close look at this because I think there is a very decent um, price jump from the 9.6 to the 9.8. And if this hasn't been pressed, an easy bump. Game Boy number two from 1990 and a 9.4. Look at that Bigfoot ad on the back. Brave and the Bold number 60, first appearance of the new Wonder Girl, 4.0 with white pages, a really nice, addition on this book to get the white pages. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles color special number one. This is the error edition that is manufactured with a hatch pattern printed on the interior page mar margins. It's a reprint of TMNT number one. Um, it's got the wraparound cover. It's just a really cool book. I have to look up and see what kind of value that has. X-Force number 11, the first appearance of the real domino in a 9-8 white. X-Men number 46. Uh, a 12 center from 1968. This is the origin of Iceman. It's just anytime you can see it, uh, a 12 cent X Men in this high a grade is really cool. Love to see that. Adventure Comics number 283, a 10 center uh, from 1961. The first Phantom Zone, the first appearance of General Zod. Uh, awesome to see that. And a 5 0. Action Comics 835, origin and first appearance of Livewire. Absolute Vertigo, no number. So this predates Preacher number one. Um, and it's a preview edition of Preacher number one. You've got the image of him there on the cover. We got a 9.8. We got two 9.8s and two 9.6s of that book. 
First issue special number eight. This this series always cracks me up. I hate the title of the series. First issue special. So they're just like trying to capitalize on these, you know, sales gimmicks of saying first issue, having the issue number one, having it say special. So this has it all. It's first issue special, issue number eight. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. It's an eight five white pages, origin and first appearance of Warlord. Amazing Spider-Man number 67 in a 9.4. Again, anytime there's a 12 cent Silver Age book in the 9.4 range, it's just really cool to see. First appearance of Randy Robertson. And, you know, this is an old label case. It probably hasn't been pressed or cleaned. Um, it's got the John Romita cover. Might be worth taking a closer look at that to see if it's a CPR candidate. Amazing Spider-Man 298, the first Todd McFarlane on Spider-Man in a 9.2 white. ASM 300 in a 90 white origin first full appearance of Venom the book we all know and love I'm definitely gonna take a closer look at this There's definitely a little bit of a corner crease right there, which is a limiting factor So it would be very difficult to get a bump. I think there's no no chance at a bump on that one nine four white pages first appearance of the hobgoblin this one has some very minor spine stress lines this corner right here is what would concern me for cracking it just ever so slightly on the tip corner of that a little tiny crease um, which I think would probably withhold it from getting anything higher than a 9.6 the back uh, there's a little bit of soiling it has not been pressed or cleaned um, but I think at best a 9.6 so might not be worth it to crack that one amazing spider-man 64 and a 9.6 with white pages awesome to see in such high grade I've always loved this Mysterio cover Amazing Spider-Man number 66 in an 8.0. Amazing Spider-Man 363, that classic Spidey, Venom, and Carnage cover in a 9.8. Another, another one for 362. And Amazing Spider-Man number 129 in a 9.2 white pages. First appearance of the Punisher. And this is an old label case. So this one has a, a manufacturing defect uh, right there in the corner, as you can see on this corner and on the opposite corner as well. So it wouldn't detract from the grade too much, but I think you'd have a hard time getting anything better than a 9.2 white. Avengers number 57 in a 9.4, first appearance of the Silver Age Vision. Now this one has a cool story. So he told me that he bought this raw himself. He met a guy who had a warehouse find of Silver Age comics and he had stacks of this book. He said like feet high of this book, hundreds of copies, uncirculated, and some of them had like uh, bug bug holes from the top so you had to like dig down into the stack to find a good copy and this was one that he pulled out of that copy it came back a 9.4 and there was other Silver Age books that he also had stacks of as well and some of those he was able to pull out 9.8s of like X-Men number 50 that Jim Serenko cover uh, he got a 9.8 of that that came from this guy's collection and several other ones that uh, didn't make it into the books that he sold to me but uh, this one did so it was really cool to hear that just a type of story that really makes you salivate and wish you could go back in time. Um, Avengers 87 and a 70 origin of the Black Panther. Avengers 83 and an 85 white first appearance of the Liberators and another 85 off white to white. Invaders annual number one from 1977. I've always loved this cover. Uh, the Invaders taking on some Nazis here on on the front cover. And we also have a 9.6 white of that book. Punisher number one in a 9.8 white pages. Punisher number one, I had never seen this. This is the hip hop variant uh, for the 2016 series of Punisher number one. Really cool to see that. Saga of the Swamp Thing number 25. And number 37, the first full appearance of John Constantine in a 9.4 white. And 38, uh, the title becomes Swamp Thing with the next issue. So right now it's Saga of the Swamp Thing. Spectre number two, a 12 center from 1968 in a 9.0. And Green Lantern number 59, uh, first appearance of Guy Gardner in a 8.0 from 1968. Green Lantern number 61. In a 6.5, a Golden Age Green Lantern appearance and cover. Akira number one, 9.8, first American appearance of Kanita and Tetsuo. First full color printing. 
Predator number one, 9.8 white pages, first appearance of Predator. And we also have a 9.6 white pages. Again, it probably hasn't been pressed. Might need to take a closer look at that one because there is a big price jump. Batman the Killing Joke, no number. Batman the Dark Knight Returns, number four. These classic Frank Miller covers, uh, absolutely love them. Fantastic Four, number 50 in a 6.5. Daredevil, number 158. Frank Miller's run on Daredevil begins, 9.8 white pages. This is one of a few books that I'm thinking about keeping every time I've never owned this book and I think it's a great investment I have a full a whole section of my personal collection that is notable artists first you know and this is definitely a notable artist in Frank Miller I'm a huge Frank Miller fan the worse the art is the more I like it and we have several examples of that in this collection and uh, this is one with good art um, and a, a classic that uh, just seems to always maintain value right now it seems like it's actually doing really well all things considered with today's market so i need to decide if i want to keep this one or not batman the long halloween number one 9.8 white pages and saban's mighty morphin power rangers number one and 98 we have multiple copies of this in this collection all right so here we are on go collect looking at this collection in its entirety to talk about the value so as you can see the value here uh, that go collect is calculating is one hundred and ten thousand two hundred and seventy six dollars so what i do for go collect is i subtract 10 to 20 percent of their fair market value and then i pay because I think that that brings it closer to what the actual fair market value is. I believe that Go Collect right now in this market is overvaluing stuff. And so then I do 60% of what I think is the actual fair market value. So for this collection, I took 20% off of the fair market value, which came to 88,000 and then 60% of that, which came to 52,998. Um, this 11,000 is the other list, which we'll go over in a future video. And then I threw in a thousand dollars to help cover the cost of renting the, uh, uh, rental van and driving out here. So the total that I paid was $65,100. And a couple of things that are interesting to note about this. You can see this total right here, 110,413 is slightly different than this, 110,276. So this value could change every single day or throughout the day as GoCollect updates the values of their books. This value can change. And uh, I've covered it in previous videos about why you know I think go collect and have shown examples of how they're overvaluing books and we'll go over a couple examples here um, because this number can be misleading you know if you have your stuff put into go collect you think oh it's worth hundred and ten thousand dollars but in this market they're overvaluing stuff now this will flip-flop in the reverse when we're in a bull market when values are going up go collect values are low so they're either low or they're high but they're always off and one thing that was interesting was and it has something to do with their algorithm like using past sales 90 days of past sales so if you're using 90 days of past sales and the market is going down this number is going to be high if you're using 90 day past sales to have some kind of formula to come up with an fmv and values are going up this number is going to be low because they're going up and it's using past values so um one thing that was interesting when he came to drop off the books I came in here to look up the most valuable books, make sure everything was there, and we were checking in the collection. And this book, Green Lantern 76, was at the top of this list. I have them sorted by value here. And this book was valued at $4,200. And I was like, wait, what? Green Lantern 76 is the most valuable book in this collection? And even the seller was like, huh, that's weird. I didn't think that was a $4,200 book. And it wasn't. It's not a $4,200 book. And so now, at, when I'm filming this a few days later, it's back down to here. So on any given day, you know, these numbers can fluctuate and be really far off. And so you have to be really careful if you're making any kind of deals based off of these numbers. And so that's another reason why I put in that 20% buffer, just in case there's any crazy outliers like that. And um, in addition, you know, I w usually go between 10 and 20% off of fair Go Collect's fair market value. And in this one, it was on the higher end of 20% because of the sheer volume of books in this collection. So these are sorted by value. And I'll just do an example here to show how GoCollect is overvaluing 
um, almost everything in, in, in today's market. Um, there was an example I saw. Sometimes I can look at one and just see, oh, that seems a little high. Like Iron Man 282 FMV they have at $350. And that seemed a little high to me. We come over here to GP analysis, look at Iron Man 282. So recent sale, $315. A sale before that, $250, 287 300 280 320 I just feel like this book is more around the 280 you know, um, two hundred and eighty dollar range would be a fair market value in in today's uh, market. So if you took twenty percent off, that would be seventy dollars off of three hundred and fifty, which would bring it down to two hundred and eighty. So there's an example of how this book, I believe, is twenty exactly twenty percent over the actual fair market value. This is Young Marcus, everyone, and Young Marcus that. is the man behind the operation. If you ever got a well-packaged book or uh, you know a funny outtake in a video, Marcus is the man behind that. He's absolutely killing it. He's got his work cut out for him with listing all these books on the website. So, Young Marcus, I wanted to let you know that as a bonus for all of your incredible work that you've been doing, you get to pick out one slab from the collection and the conditions are it's valued at $500 or less. So, yes. So there you go. You can build your collection. You got Thank a lot you. of awesome stuff to choose from here. And if you figure out which book you choose uh, by the time this video posts, make sure you include that in the video so people know and then say why you picked what you picked. I'm excited. Forgot to mention that one of the conditions was you have to keep the book. You can't flip it on eBay. Young Marcus is an industrious young man. And so I had to make that stipulation. So what you- I'm totally stoked to keep this book actually because it's the first uh, manga that was published uh, in the West. It's Akira number one in a 9-8 awesome book. Uh, first print. I uh, wear my Godzilla shirt. I love Godzilla and uh, anime. And this book, uh, it's taken place uh, 1992. Third World War began because of this explosion that happened in Tokyo, Neo-Tokyo. And uh, this is an awesome book. Perfect. Thank you very much, Brian. Winning. Winning. There you have it, folks. Some really exciting books, some really exciting content on the way for this collection. So make sure you're subscribed and that you comment and leave a like on this video. It will enter you to win a free slab this month. And we also have a monthly giveaway over at BriceComics.com if you sign up for the newsletter. This month, we're giving away that three book 9.8 connecting set by Care Andrews. All you have to do is subscribe to the newsletter, and every month you stay subscribed, you're entered to win a new slab. It's where you also get first access to new collections and new inventory like this collection. So as this collection gets posted onto the website, I will send out email notifications right after I make those uh, listings live. So if you want first crack on them, make sure you're subscribed to that newsletter. We also have a ton of exciting things in store for whatnot and mystery boxes, all kinds of fun stuff. Link down in the description for $15 towards your first purchase on whatnot where a huge chunk of these books are going to go starting at $1. There will be good deals. There will be tons of giveaways. There will be wheel spins. It's going to be a lot of fun even if you don't like the whole experience of buying and selling on whatnot it's a little bit different on my page and you can come by just to hang out we usually do it on a Friday night you don't have to buy anything you just come by and hang out we have a lot of fun so I hope to see you there uh, thank you as always for sticking with me to the end of the video and we'll catch you in the next one bye I want to try doing well hold on a second I want to try to do something where like we transition you want to do that, like put your hand like into the camera and then we'll transition. And then okay. when you do the highlight later, I think we should start doing like cool transitions. Okay. Okay. But just, just literally put your All hand right. into it. So we'll see you guys in just a <laughs> <laughs> But you're supposed to say something. Uh, say something. Transition. Transitions.